Hello, we are reading Stanley in Space by Jeff Brown. We are on chapter four, In Space. I'll just flip this omelet, said Mrs. Lambchop, making breakfast in the Star Scout. And then, oh dear, the omelet hovered like a frisbee in the air above her. Mostly, however, after weeks in space, the lamb chops remembered that gravity, the force that hold, held things down, did not exist beyond Earth's atmosphere. Mrs. Lambchop often read now with her hands clasped behind her head, allowing Mr. Lambchop often read now with his hands clasped behind his head, allowing the book to float before him. And Stanley and Arthur greatly enjoyed pushing from their chairs to drift like feathers across the room. Raising her pan, Mrs. Lantrop brought down the omelet. After breakfast, what, what, she said, a game of Monopoly? Please, not again, Arthur sighed. I'd, I, if I'd known that this adventure would be so boring, I'd never have come. The worst part, Stanley said, is not knowing how long it'll last. The beginning wasn't boring, Arthur said, as they began their breakfast. The beginning was fun. The first days had to had in fact been tremendously exciting. They had spent many hours at the Star Scouts magnifying windows, watching the bright globe of Earth glow steadily smaller until it seemed to only at last only a pale marble in the black of space. And there had been so many special sights to see. The starry beauty of the Milky Way, the planets, red Mars, giant Jupiter, cloudy Venus, Saturn with its shiny rings. The third evening, they appeared on TV news broadcasts on Earth. Word of their voyage had been released to the press, and all over the world, people were eager to learn how this extraordinary adventure was proceeding. Stanley Standing before the spaceship's camera, the lamp shop said they felt fine, looked forward to meeting the, the tyrants, and would re report nightly while they, re they remained in TV range. The fourth evening was float they floated before the camera, demonstrating weightlessness. This was greatly appreciated on Earth, and they floated again the following day. By the sixth day, however, they were hard-pressed to liven up the appearances. Mrs. Lambchop recited a baseball poem. Mr. Lambchop recited a baseball poem. Casey at the bat. Stanley juggled tennis balls, but the earth, but the earth audience, knowing now about weightless, saw the balls float when he tossed them up. Arthur did imitations of a rooster a dog, and a man stuck in a phone booth. After this, while Mrs. Lambchop was singing her college song, he went behind the plastic curtain to undress for a shower and accidentally pulled the curtain down. It was mortified! And she tried later to comfort him. We will be remembered, Arthur, for one time for our time in space, she said. Nobody will care about the curtain. I will be remembered forever, Arthur said. A hundred million people saw me in my underwear. The next day was Stanley's birthday. And just after dinner, the screen lit up. There was the president in his shirt sleeves behind his desk in the White House in Washington, D.C. Well, here I am working late again, the president call said. It's a tough job. Believe me, happy birthday, Stanley Lamb Chop. I've arranged surprise. First, your friends from school. There was a silence for a moment, broken only by the clearing of throats, and then, from all the millions of miles away, came the voices of Stanley's classmates singing, Happy birthday, dear Stanley. Happy birthday to you. Stanley was tr tremendously pleased. Thanks, everybody, he said. You too, Mr. President. That was just the USA part, said the President. Ready over there in London, Queen? We are indeed, the Queen's voice said. And now, Master Lambchop, our famous Westminster Boys Choir. From England, the beautiful voices of the famous choir sang, Happy birthday, dear Stanley, all over again. And then other children sang in from Germany, Spain, and France. All this attention on Stanley made Arthur jealous. And when the president said, By the way, Arthur, 
you entertained us wonderfully the other night. He was sure that he was a tease about his appearance in underwear, but he was wrong. Those invitations, the president said, especially the fellow in the phone booth. Darn good. Indeed, the queen asks, added from England. We were greatly amused. Oh, thank you, said Arthur, cheered. I, the screen had gone blank. They had traveled too far. There would be no more voices from Earth, no voices but their own until they heard what the tyrants had to say. Suppose the tyrants have forgotten we we're coming, Stanley said. We must just sail around in space forever. They had finished their breakfast omelet and were ready, were now sitting at the Monopoly board because there was nothing more interesting to do. They don't even know our names, Arthur said. What will they call us? Earth people, said the deep voice. Very probably, said Mr. Lambchop. Earth people seems, who said that? Not me, said the Stanley and Arthur. Not I, said Mrs. Lambchop, correcting. But who? Earth people, the voice louder now came from the Star Scouts radio. Greetings from the great planet Tyra and it's Marty people. Do you hear me? Oh my, Mr. Lambchop turned up the volume. It's them. They, said Mrs. Lambchop, for heaven's sake, Harriet, Mr. Lambchop said and spoke loudly into the microphone. Hello, Tyra, Earth people here. Party of four, peace-loving family. Peace-loving family, said voice. Good, so it is mighty Tyra. Where are you, Earth people? Stanley checked his star maps. We're just where the tail of Ralph's Comet meets star number 3,047. Now what? Right, said the Tyra voice. Keep going till you pass a star formation that looks like a foot. You can't miss it. Then, just past a lopsided little white moon, start down, you'll see a pointy mountain. Then a big field, land there. See you soon, Earth people. You bet, Mr. Lampchop said. Turn to his family, the first contact with another planet. We are making history. They passed the foot-shaped star formation then the lopsided moon and Stanley pointed to the star scout down. The darkness of space vanished as it descended and at last the lamp chop saw clearly the planet it had been taken so long to reach. Tyra was a smallish, was smallish as planets go, but nicely round and quite pretty. All in shades of brown with markings not unlike the oceans and continents of Earth. A pointy mountain came into sight, and beyond it, a big field. There's Stanley pressed the landing button. Broom went the, scout, scout, the Star Scouts rockets. The spaceship hovered, then touched down. Peering out, the lamp chop saw only a brown field with tan trees at the far side of the brownish hills beyond. Curious, said Mr. Lambert, where are? Suddenly a message came, but not the sort they expected. Surrender, Earth people, said the radio. Your spaceship is trapped by our unbreakable trapping cable. You are our prisoners of Tyra. Surrender. Oh, no. What's going to happen next? That is the end of that chapter. <laughs>